everybody. Good afternoon. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. Hope you're all keeping cool wherever you are. <laughs> it's like 98 degrees outside here. Um, all of America is experiencing a tremendous heat wave. Unbelievable. Um, other places are cold. So wherever you are, please, please stay safe. Um, I have been in my sewing room and I've done a little bit of sewing. Now I'm going to be back to making some little, small little quilts. Um, as I said in the beginning of the season, well, actually I, I just made two huge quilts. <laughs> my, uh, my snowflake quilt and my um, embroidered blocks quilt. That's funny. Um, I've been quite prolific actually. I was thinking this year, thinking I, I hope this channel, me, bring something as far as it, the quilting world to you and I thought oh, I have done quite a lot actually in 2024 I made the three fabric cut quilts which I have yet to quilt I don't like having unfinished uh, projects around or uh, work you know finished quilt tops um, so I will get to quilting them um, I did my couple of wall hangings. Anyway, um, again, I do hope you are enjoying my channel for whatever it brings into your life. Um, but today, I woke up with like this sort of, I know what I'm going to do because I saw one online and I thought, I've never, no, tell a lie. I made one years ago experimenting. It didn't really work out that well. Um, not hard project but it looks really hard but the following tutorial is to to come in this video is to show you how i made this little quilt here it's the folded star it's it's a quilt with a ton of fabric in this little 10 inch block a yard of fabric i think it is or i don't know three quarters of a yard folded 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 all sorts of funky ways and then um made into a not a pot holder they're called folded star pot holders um i i wouldn't like it doesn't have insole braid in it it doesn't have batting it it's thick i would use it more as a trivet now i had i had I hadn't done one i did one years ago and ian had taken it for his office his, his other office and we can't we don't know where it is we moved since so this was my sort of prototype that i had done I was experimenting on this one and as you can see what I'm emphasizing the most is when you're fabric selecting this is great for scraps if you can get from a scrap eight three by five pieces of fabric you need uh, 64 pieces of fabric three by five in this little quilt here um, and I, I tell you the things I do make one mistake I, I tell you to cut um, four inch squares for the corners it's a three inch square um, and I will put up a note as you go along. It's a three inch square for the four corners. Um, again, I just give you um, sort of my, uh, not a cliff notes, I am fast forwarding because a lot of it is repetition. Um, the actual folding part, um, you have to be very careful. But again, it's more just like a braid and I tell you how to go along. Um, I would recommend when I say, I guess about um, four or five, uh, folds in I say to stitch it down I would stitch it down every like two folds you'll you'll see if you watch the video but down at the bottom because you don't want it to show you're stitching and again I I sort of experimented this with with this I use my white thread your thread will show and I change my thread to blue I explain that all along the way again it's not it's not batted it's not doesn't have insole bright um I've been I, I've been seeing these things and I'm thinking wouldn't that make a fabulous quilt well it would be so heavy <laughs> you you might have 40 yards of fabric in a, in a twin size quilt because of the way it's folded and everything but I was looking at it and I thought if you made say three of these and then you like bordered you know or sashed it with a small board it could make a lovely say a table runner a really pretty long table runner so it's you're not just you're not just like, what are you going to do with it? I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Like, I'm not going to use it as a pot holder. Um, I'll just hang it up in the, as a pretty little quilt. Um, and that was my whole thing. I'm doing pretty little quilts. So this is just a, as I was saying, I experimented with, with this. This is a pretty little quilt that I've made. I do hope you enjoy it. It's, it's, um, it's not daunting, but this took me, I guess these, these each took me between two and three hours to make, you know, sitting down and, and working on them. Um, so they're not quick, 
but they're not hard once you get into the swing of things. Again, it's repetitive, repeat, 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 ad nauseum. Um, I used a pre-made, pre-bought uh, pre uh, bias binding from the package. I just used that. You can use a quilt binding to bind it. It's a little quilt. And then I made this little hanging thing. I probably would just hang these up in my kitchen because they look pretty. And again, the contrast, but I explained that all to you, how you're going to sort out the contrasting colors. That's the whole point of it. You could make it all in, you know, neutral colors, but you're not really going to see the beauty of the star. And Maxwell said, oh, it's like the barn stars we saw, um, the barn art that we saw. I guess stars are on my mind. So this is a two, four, six. This is an eight-pointed star. Isn't that interesting? I'll go hang it on our barn. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial to come up. Stay cool. Bye-bye. Have a good one. So when I was making my sort of uh, sample, my prototype here, I chose to use eight fat quarters that I had, cutting from the long side of my fat quarters to cut all of my pieces. But you can use scraps for this project. If you have a big enough scrap, eight, of, eight different ones, to cut eight three by five rectangles from from one scrap okay so I I'm choosing here uh, this is a this is a piece of fabric but the rest of these are fat quarters that I have chosen in this pile one two three four five six seven eight now from each one of my fat quarters I am going to cut eight three by five rectangles I'm going to end up with 64 three by five rectangles from either scraps, eight each, or from fat quarters. And that, it's quite a lot of fabric. <laughs> it's a hefty little quilt here that ends up. Now, you can use less fabrics, or you could use like four and have four fabrics and cut 16 of the four. Do you see what I mean? But I'm using eight different fabrics on my quilt my little quilt here and as you can see on my sample I have a contrast I have a, a darker doesn't have to be darker could have been light and then then a little bit darker here and I didn't end with the dark I ended with the dot but there's a darker there like every third every second or third fabric okay that I've chosen that really makes my star pop okay now it's very important after I'm going to be cutting which I won't bore you with because it takes a while. This, this, this little quilt took me about two and a half, three hours to make um, because there's a lot of cutting and ironing and then stitching down, but it's not hard once you do it. So after I cut my three and a half, in, my three by five triangles, um, uh, rectangles, what I have done here, and I think probably this is my, um, probably my end result. I might mess about with it when I, when I have them all cut, but what, what is very, very important when you're cutting or when you're choosing your, your uh, fabric for your star is the contrast, obviously. So you could have uh, all like shabby chic, but it's not going to pop. So I have, as I said here, I have pretty much three or four pretty startling contrasts. And in my middle, I'm, I'm deeming to have this little quilt here. I'm having this, um, this teal here, which will be my middle star. And then I have a print and a print and another print and another print. And then I have a black. But this black print here, that reads dark. Okay, that reads dark. And then, of course, my black and white dot read dark. And then these read a little bit neutral. This is light. So there's going to be a nice contrast between this light blue with the tiny little print and the black. And then there's going to be a nice contrast between, you're not going to see a lot of the fabrics, of course you're only going to see quarter of an inch, but you're going to have a nice contrast between this pale blue, TOE blue, and the black print that's there, okay? So I'm guaranteed that my contrast is going to be quite nice, just like it is on my little prototype here. So I'm going to cut out eight three by five rectangles from each of these. What you're also going to be needing for our corner squares on our little um, pot holder here are four 
four inch squares. I've cut them a little bit big, but you'll see we're going to snowball the corners, um, but we're going to double over the snowball because this is very thick and I don't, I didn't want just one layer. So I've doubled over this corner. So we've cut four, four inch squares. Now we are going to need a base for which to sew all of our uh, which to sew and fold all of our stars uh, down on. So what I've done is I've cut two 10 inch squares. I have cut one 10 inch square for the back of my little quilt. Okay. So this will be the back of my quilt. It's just a, actually I didn't cut it. It came from an, an odd 10 inch packet. So there's a nice 10 inch square that you're not really going to see, but that's the back of my little quilt there. Um, now, what I have done here is I've shown you just for, for argument's sake, I've, you're just going to cut two, but I've cut one. This is how a lot of people make this little quilt. I've, um, out of a piece of white fabric or a piece of white scrap fabric, okay? Because this is going to be our base, which we're going to be, we're going to be sewing and folding all of these stars uh, fabrics onto, okay? So you're going to need a base. This piece of fabric won't show pretty much if you do it well. This piece of fabric, this white scrap piece of fabric, will not show. However, what I've done is I've cut a piece of fabric that will match my first middle star. Because if I don't do it right, then you will see this little bit of here. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut my fabric because I have quite a lot. But what you could also do is if you have a piece of scrap and you don't have a lot of fabric, you could just cut, um, just say a little square of fabric right here. Maybe just glue, stick it on. But you have to be aware that we're, this center point here is very important. So I just marked my base fabric with my lines okay i've marked the first thing i've done i'm going to be using my this fabric here and hopefully you can see my lines i can see it what i've done is i've taken a ruler and i've drawn a diagonal and a diagonal and that gives me on my perfect 10 inch square that gives me the exact center point where then i line my ruler up this is five inches and five inches and i go right through on the vertical here and then on the horizontal to this point. And this is the point. This center point here is where everything happens. Everything happens from this point. Now, another thing I learned when I was making my little quilt here is, maybe it's not super important, but I think it is, <laughs> is I was using white thread. You know me. I'm using white thread. Well, you can actually see my white thread. All right, you can actually see my white thread coming right through. Okay, just, just a little bit. It's okay here, but with a dark red. So what I've learned, this is a, a, a polyester thread, a, a less expensive polyester thread, but strong. So what I've done is I've matched my polyester thread to my, pretty much my lot of fabrics here. I don't want to be using a bright white. So it's going to start my polyester teal thread will start on the top and you'll see it ending on the blue polka dot here and you can't really see that okay it's just a little thing that's all so i would match my thread from to the top piece here and then if you're going to be doing excuse me you want something okay there's maxwell say hello hello so um if you're going to be using the white then you just got to be very careful to follow the instructions really carefully because this could end up a little bit of a a pence a penned white thing in there but the way i did it is pretty good but you do see the white thread there so i learned that i'm going to use my color thread the last thing you're going to be wanting to do is you're going to be having i use the bias tape you can use a you can use a quilt binding uh, once this is done and i'll show you how you just you just stick the back on it uh, wrong side to wrong side and then I just I just um, which, this isn't quilted here this isn't quilted you just stick it on and uh, nothing is quilted it's just sewn it's just folded and sewn is I've pressed all of my 64 um, 3 by 5 
pieces of fabric. I wanted to, I forgot to mention this. Um, there is a tremendous amount of fabric in this little silly 10 inch square. <laughs> I don't know, it's three quarters, a yard or something of fabric. Um, what this is good for is to use up less, better, less quality fabric. Um, this is a great thing if you have some old fabric, if you have some very thin fabric. You see how thin that is? Look at that. That is not quality quilting cotton. Now, somebody may disagree with me um, about the quality when we're making quilts. I quite think that this thinner fabric here, which it is, although it's so pretty, is better because there's not so much weight and you're not using $13 a yard quilting fabric. So if you see a fat quarter bundle that's on sale and it's sort of scratchy and it's thin and you say, oh, that's not for me. It, this is a decorative little item. It's a little quilt. It's a, it can be a practical little trivet as opposed to a pot holder, I think. But again, there's not a lot of weight to that fabric, which makes it ideal because we are using so much fabric in this little quilt. So not the thinner, the better, but, um, yeah, maybe the thinner, the better. We don't want incredible, fabulously heavy weight fabric again, because there's like a yard of fabric. So now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, turning over one of the edges like so and pressing that down. And as you can see, I've done all of my, this is a, this is a little exercise that will take, um, you know, this is 20 minutes or so of, of, of at the iron. So I've laid out in order of my uh, star, I've laid out my turned in the top rectangles. And this is the unit over here. Let me just put this down here. This is the unit that I'm going to be making. Okay, this is the order that I had. And I'm, I'm laying one on top of each other with the same amount, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, like so. Now, when I do that, let me just come over here, a little bit unconventional. I'm going to be taking some sellotape, okay? It's not, we're not gonna be having it, using it so much that it's gonna leave a residue. I'm just gonna be putting that to secure my units in case the wind comes along and blows them, just on the edges, just like that, okay? Now, that's going to be pulled off, obviously. So I'm just going to continue taking one from each pile until we have eight of these identical units. I've brought over my marked base fabric that has the diagonals and the horizontal and the vertical. What you're wanting to do very carefully, and I think, you know, taping them together helps really a lot. You want to take one of your uh, units here. And since we have cut these exactly at five inches, there's my five inch mark. All right, since we've cut them exactly at five inches, what we're going to do is we're going to place that top piece there that's almost the same color as my base. If you're going to use the white, by all means, if you're wanting to use the white, knock yourself out. I'm using the blue. I'm not overlapping that horizontal line in the middle. I'm just placing it right on the top. Now, I want to make sure it's perfectly um, two and a half inches from this line over to my edge of my fabric. So I want to center this because my my line underneath obviously is perfectly two and a half inches. Now that's really very, very good. Okay, so what I want to do is at this point down here, I want to draw a line almost like off that fabric there. Okay, and I'm going to pin. Now after you do these for a while, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to pin but I'm just going to pin like so, okay? I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to I, I'm going to sew from this point straight down to that point there. Now, you can't see it, but I have started here and I have shortened my stitch length. I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine in a minute. I've shortened my stitch length um, 
and I've backstitched ever so carefully because sort of you're going to see this stitching here this what you this stitching in the middle of one eight pieces you're wanting to have pretty nice you don't want it not gnarly threads or knots again I have changed my thread color to my well my backing which probably won't show but if it does it's the same blue to my blue here and then my blue down here again that, if, if that doesn't bother you uh, don't worry about your thread color but that's what I've done now because I've secured that I can take off this thread I mean this um this tape right here and these again these are floppy so now I'm going to take my second bit and I'm going to go back over to my machine and I'm going to show you I'm going to turn this around my whole little unit here which is taped together. Oops, it's shifted slightly. If, can you imagine if I hadn't, if I hadn't um, taped it? <laughs> it really would have shifted. So you want to make sure that's nice and everything is nice and square. The same amount of space is between all of the fabrics. That makes the big difference. And again, I'm, I'm doing the mirror image, the reverse image. I'm just butting this edge here right on that line. I'm not overlapping it. I'm going to be stitching from here down, but I want to make sure that this is nice and straight and square. So I'm going to take my two and a half from this point. There's my two and a half. I'm going to shift it over slightly. And I'm just going to make a line off my fabric right there. And then I'm going to pin it. Oops. So again, I have stitched from that middle point, back stitching a little bit, keeping that back stitch really nice and neat. And I've gone right down and off. I'm going to take my pins out and I'm going to remove the tape. Now, all we're going to be doing is doing the exact same thing on all eight points. I'm going to swivel this around. I'm going to take my third unit. And what we're going to do is we're going to just because we've stitched this nice. I've used, as I said, I've used a smaller stitch, so it's nice and secure. There's lots of fabric there. We don't want to have a loose stitch. I don't, I want to make sure there's no tucks or folds. I'm going to just, again, position right up to that, right in the middle there, right up to there. And again, since I can't necessarily see the um, line below, I'm going to make sure that I have my two and a half from this center point right down. There's my two and a half. I know that's two and a half. And I'm just going to mark it right down there and I then can eyeball after I pin this, I can eyeball my stitching seam. floppy mess here. <laughs> All of these pieces that are secured. What we're going to do is not going to be daunted. We're going to find, turn this on, see if that helps. Yeah, we're going to find the middle of one of the sides, one of the um, sections here. Okay, we're going to push all of this away. We're just going to concentrate on one side here. Now this is where we're going to be like braiding. Oh, Wait a second. I don't want to be sewing here, actually. Um, I'm going to be securing one section at a time, but I'll show you that. So here is one quarter of here, okay? We're going to be concentrating on these fabrics here that have the, t the identical colors, okay? And as you can see, I'm very pleased. There's my line. There's my, my drawn line, and my stitching is, is really good. So I've secured all of these um, eight units. My hands... My hands are a little bit in the way, sorry. But what we're going to do is the first two blue units here, we're going to turn over. We're going to take this folded edge, and as much as we can, without pulling, we're going to fold that over once to the, to the line, okay? Just do one side at a time. We're going to fold that over once, making sure we're sort of not pulling, but we're sort of making sure this center point, which is going to be the center of our star. We fold that over once. We're then going to fold this fold over twice. Okay? Looks like a big long triangle there. 
going to fold that over. And then this is the only one we have to do three times. The rest are just once. So we have folded our first piece over in half. The fold down to the line. In half again. The fold down to the line. And then we're going to sort of tuck that under and roll that over. Okay, and that's the, that's the piece that you're going to have. This funky folded triangle like that, okay? We're going to just sort of hold that there. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. We're going to fold this, making sure we have our point. We're going to fold that down like so. That fold to there. Sort of tuck that in, with, hold that. Once you get going, it's sort of easy. <laughs> it's fiddly. Then you're going to fold, take this fold here, making sure our center point's nice, and fold that over. This is the trickiest part, okay? And then we're just going to roll that bit to the center. Okay? So hopefully, without my fingers there, you can see what we've created, okay? We've created a nice triple folded unit there. Now, we're going to just hold that because the rest of them are get folded once. So we're going to take our next little flat floral, and we're always sort of pulling from this point here. And they've been stitched nice, so we're going to tuck that, we're going to tuck this edge here, again right into this line, holding it, and then we're going to fold that over. And it starts just covering over the bottom piece, okay? So we're just going to take this, Fold it, making sure we have our point up here. Folding that slowly there. And then we're just going to fold, fold that over. Now we're not wanting to be pulling anything. We're just going to be placing our braided pieces, okay? Doing the exact same thing. Now we're going to, this is our third. We're going to fold that. Sort of tuck that in there, fold it over, sort of finger press that, holding it, pull this one, again, this is the point we want our nice sharp pointed star, we're just going to fold that, obviously you're not rushing this, and then we're just going to pull that over, and as you can see, our star is going to be made. Now, uh, with my dark piece here, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I am going to secure it, and I'll show you that in, a, in one second. I'm going to fold that over, I'm going to sort of tuck that in, pull that all the way out to here so it covers what's underneath. Take the left hand side, making sure I have a nice sharp point there, and then folding that right over. Okay, and I'm not pulling anything underneath. Now, I do have this here. What I am going to do on this unit here, down here, down here, not up here because your stitching will show, but down here, I'm just going to secure this fourth. You can do it on the third, or you can do it on every one if you wanted. I'm just going to give it a few stitches to hold that lot down. You're not going to see this. Where are my scissors here? You're not going to see that stitching. But it is, if you think you're running out of fingers, you can just secure it down like that. We're just going to, in front of us, I'm going to just continue. My right hand side, I'm sort of pulling out, making sure that this edge is tucked right under that. And then just roll that right over. You see that? Just roll that right over. Get all these out of the way. I'm going to take this one on the left. Making sure I have a nice point there that's tucked under, and I'm just going to pull that and roll that one over. Okay, don't worry about all this mess over here. We're just making sure that these overlap each other. So again, the right fold, pull it over, holding that, the left fold, Pull it over. 
again, we can just hold it with our fingers. We're coming to our seventh one, our seventh piece. It's being tucked, our nice point there. It's just rolling over. We're not pulling anything. We're not pulling. Everything's nice and flat underneath. Our left hand. We're sort of pulling down and into each other, but not creasing anything. Can you see the star merging? And then my bottom, my blue dot, we're going to do the exact same thing. Pull it over, roll it towards, this, this stitching is showing, don't worry about that. Roll it towards the middle, and then our left hand. And again, I'm going to hold them, and I'm going to secure that. Now the 10 inch square is sort of over here. I want to catch that 10 inch square. Just secure these, these last few. So the folds don't come up and out. The stitching will be hidden. So there, hopefully you can see, is one of our stars. I'll do one more on this side. So we have two, two sort of like a braid. Now these are all secure. These are all secure. So I'm going to come over, I'm going to separate these, like that, these, this, this goes over, this goes over there, and I will just continue. Folding, <laughs> take a month of Sundays, just uh, braiding, folding, folding, fold. oh, it looks so pretty. It's really come up nicely. So now, and I really do um, advise that you stitch down every few, just at the very end, so that stitching doesn't um, show, but I will tell you that. Now, very carefully, I want you to turn it over, and it's full of rubbish, tons and tons of stitches and, and stuff. What I want you to do is about a quarter inch away from the back edge of the 10 inch square, I want you to stitch um, a, a line and it's go slow because we're stitching through a ton of fabric. this you will need to cut these uh, corners at three inch squares not four inch squares I will have addressed that in the beginning now what we're going to do again if you want to draw a vertical um, diagonal line we're going to be I, I don't have to but um, if by all means you're going to be wanting to draw a diagonal line we're going to be stitching this is on the wrong side of our is on the wrong side of our squares what we're doing is we're going to be putting our three inch square right on the corner and then we're going to be stitching exactly on that line right on that line you want to be stitching right through all those layers chasing me again take it take it steady this is a three inch square diagonal to diagonal we're not going to be cutting off our our corner unit here because this is a very, very thick uh, little quilt here, and we want our corners to be just as thick on the, on the corner as we do our quilt. And as I go along, I'm just going to, as you can see, I just folded that back over, and again, I'm just gonna stitch that down, my corner down, making the nice 10 inch square, nice and square again. And my corner has those layers in it. So what I've done is I've snowballed my corners and I'm going to be putting the wrong side of my little quilt to the wrong side of my back, which is exactly a 10 inch square. And all I'm going to do is around the edge, I'm going to stitch that front of my quilt back down to the backing. And as you know, or may not know, when you get prepackaged binding like this, 
just in America. <laughs> the binding is made with two sides. It's made with, it's made, this is black so you can't really see it. But it's made with a narrower side, which is here. And then it's made with a wider side, which is there. Now I'm going to be, in, I'm going to be putting the fabric, the quilt sandwich in the back, uh, towards, on the back side, on the wide side of my binding. And I'm just going to be turning over the narrow side. Now when I do that, that means when I stitch on that line, close to that line, because the back is wider from the manufacturer, it's going to catch on the back. I don't have to worry about it not catching on the back. Now, I have blue thread. I can, I'm just going to use blue thread. I want to get this over with. But what I want to do is, as you saw in the beginning, I had like a hanging little thing. I'm going to start my binding on one side with about, say, five, four or five inches. I'm putting the quilt sandwich right through there and I'm going to start my binding my stitching about an inch down and all I'm doing again the wider side of my binding is on the bottom and all I'm doing is I'm laying my quilt sandwich with all of these raw edges right up to the fold I'm not pushing it past the fold I'm not putting it this way I'm pushing it right up to the fold so my binding is enclosing all of that stuff there you see that You get the idea. So there, my lovely little quilt. But yeah, folded star. So very pretty. Hope you enjoyed this, folks. Love from the true loves. Bye.